<laughs> okay. Uh, well, uh, welcome back, right? Uh, so, like I mentioned in the forward introduction, in a birth chart is very difficult to um, approach holistically for a client who uh, wants to know anything and everything under the sun. And even though this may be particularly for those younger customers that are very idealistic, hopeful, kind of like dreamer type, but that's the other situation. If you're dealing with an adult, they may already have precursors set as to what they're looking for and what they want. When you're dealing with young people, this is not completely set yet, and they may want to know about hell. In that case, or in that instance, the astrologer has to take control and decide what is best for the young client to know at that particular moment in time that will most benefit him. If this person is very young, myself as an astrologer, I don't choose clients below 23. But I've had some clients that were 19 years old, 18 years old, right at the mark. Usually I have their parents' permission and the parents are present when I read the chart. And only discuss minimal factions that will, almost like seeds, seed ideas, that will push them into the direction where they need to be. Uh, some of these young people I keep until the 27, 28, and it's a nice, modest growth and direction. And, and it leaves them and their parents quite satisfied that the astrologer or the astrological council actually benefited someone. Because when you're that young, uh, you know, discussing the fatalistic of your life at 18, it's not going to really carry much weight. It has to be piecemeal so like that the person can embrace it and emulate it and then make decisions that will push him to that direction. So when it comes to young clients, you know, below 23, you know, but not below 19, it's about inseminating seeds from the birth trap. When it comes to adults 23 and older, it's about actually looking at cycles and points that they can take advantage of and utilize for their own advantage. Already though, these clients that I'm not told of already have an idea a general consensus as to where they're going and what they want, right? So part two of the birth chart interpretation that I do with any and every chart is that I discuss cycles. So the first part, we talk about definite determinants and definite target indicators that don't change and although they seem fatalistic, is actually true to that client. The second phase of birth chart interpretation is that I discuss the cycles, the cycles of the planet, which parallel the cycles of life. For example, Mars has an 18-month cycle with a three-month retrograde period. Venus has an eight-year cycle with a one-and-a-half-year retrograde period. So money, relationships, Partnerships come to the fore with Venus. You have Saturn, which has several cycles within cycles. It's a two and a half year cycle, seven and a half year cycle, and a 29 and a half year cycle. The moon has a two and a half year cycle. Mercury has a monthly cycle, and of course, there's a period where he goes retrograde for a long time, almost half the month, not the whole month, right? Uh, the retrograde is another cycle versus the directness of the planets. So when we're talking about Venus direct, that's one cycle. When we're talking about Venus retrograde, that's another cycle, you know? And each are defined quite succinctly. Mm -hmm. So that's what we focus on on the second portion of the birth chart interpretation, the cycles of the planets, the transits, and how they correlate to your particular age and experience as to how they are affected. 
it's very valuable information because that way you if you're going through a hard period or a harsh period you know that it won't be forever because it's a cycle and you're going through a cycle period that may be good or may be challenging and this also can be explained in the birth chart as to why it's happening and then what you can do to circumvent it okay so so let's begin with the first portion which is to put the players out on tape we got 12 signs of the zodiac and we got 12 astrological houses and we have 10 planets now the division of the houses that i use is placidus which is the tropical system versus the sidereal right? uh, i don't use vedic since the Vedic system does not employ the astrological houses. Okay. okay, so the first thing that we look at, now that you know the 10, the 12 uh, signs of the zodiac, and they create the field division of the 12 houses, and then you have the 10 planets, and then you have the asteroids, uh, personal points, and other stuff that. Um, becomes the third aspect of verb chart interpretation and that includes the harmonics and the midpoints and it's more investigative than predictive. You can read more about it on my website, thepeoplesastrologer.com and I go into a series of dissertations explaining this in, in, in different angles so you can have a holistic viewpoint of how this works, okay? You know, even though astrology is considered by the masses to be something very um, pop, popular, like pop astrology, and it's fun, and it's, um, you know, how can I put it, uh, something that people can take lightly or they can take seriously, uh, it's quite consistent. Uh, if we look at it from an esoteric point of view, which borders on the spiritual, it's a whole different definition of the mundane aspect of astrology. The mundane aspect of astrology, which is what we have here, we're going to talk about, is the actual uh, manipulation of matter, manipulation of nature, one's own nature, one's own environment, and possibly somebody else's. Right? with the planets and the stars and the movements and the progressions and the secondary progressions and the retrogrades all that falls under the mundane you know the actual physical movement and manifestation of life's events as according to inner cycles of change and also the outer transits which causes them okay. but then there's another aspect of astrology which is the esoteric and the esoteric moves us from the mundane to the spiritual. Here is like two separate birth charts in one. And the astrologer has to make the decision, what is the client ready to hear? The mundane aspect or the esoteric? Both are useful and beneficial, but it depends on the cycle and age of the client. And if he or she is ready to receive that information that can benefit them both holistically spiritually and mundanely because one can encompass all of it whereas the mundane actually f focuses on the physical manifestation of cycles that may be pertinent for the growth of that person the esoteric cycles and definitions transcends that and it borders more on spiritual lessons, spiritual journeys, and transcendental types of uh, experiences that either one is seeking to obtain or one is seeking to explain. Right? So these are the, the two uh, roads of, a chart of astrology and birth chart interpretation. So we're gonna start with discussing the players. I already mentioned the 12 signs of the Zodiac, you know what they are, and the 12 astrological houses. If you don't, go to my website, thepeoplesastrologer.com, go to the homepage, and I have a whole breakdown 
Then we have the 10 planets, right? And of course, these 10 planets have personality attachments to them, which color the sign and houses that they rule. Right? And a combination of these defines the human personality and the human ego. Not in, not in its completeness though, because free will will then add or take away from what's already there, okay? So it's almost like the universe allows us room to change stuff and to either follow the path given to us by the birth chart or create our own path. And this is part of the free will that we have. A lot of people say, a lot of people say, oh, well, birth chart is not, uh, astrology is not real because we got free will. No, no, no. Astrology is very real. The thing is that you're not binded by it. You're not obligated to be bound by it, to follow it. Your free will determines if you want to or not. Like I said though, it's better to follow the path and blueprint that was carved out for you. It makes life easier, a little better, and less arduous. Because one thing that is certain, if you exercise your free will based on wrong choices, it's not gonna be any easier for you to climb to success than it would be had you followed the path already carved out and given to you. So, and that is something that the astrologer cannot teach you. You have to have that wisdom and discernment already coming in, you know? Because you're the, 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 you're, you're the captain of the ship, okay? You're the captain. Okay, so for Mr. De Jesus here, uh, we, we start out with the elements. In astrology, we got four elements. We got water, we got earth, air, and fire. Our planet is made of these four elements. So therefore, we are made of these four elements. Not just our physical body, but the other six bodies that's in us. Remember, I've done videos where this is not the only body that we have. The physical. We have seven bodies. The physical is the last one that we can visibly see. The elements feed and nurture these other bodies in addition to that of the physical that we can see when we look in the mirror. These elements of fire, water, air, and earth describe temperaments. Temperaments that can uh, enhance personality or can deplete it. Okay? And each element in its own right is quite valuable. All of the other bodies have all of these four elements. And, and depending on the distribution of the 10 planets to these four elements will determine the level of vitality, strength, resiliency, or even competency that one is born with. Uh, in the case of Mr. De Jesus, uh, he has out of the 10 planets, one planet in an air. Air symbolizes intellect, communication. Water represents feelings and emotions. Fire, inspiration and action. And earth, material dominance and health and hygiene and money. So with one planet out of 10, and in the air, we are looking at a person that either may need to learn to communicate more effectively or learn the nuts and bolts of communication or may need to be more communicative in exposition. We have one planet out of the 10 in water, which symbolizes emotions and feelings. So with one planet here out of the 10, this person may have uh, issues opening up emotionally or receiving emotional regard. There may have been a lack of warmth growing up or a lack of uh, emotional security here. There may be a sense of apathy 
based on reactions and experiences in the person's childhood. Right? And this is going to color the way he's going to formulate a relationship with the opposite sex, depending on how much energy has been learned or accumulated here will determine the level and health of the relationship not just with the opposite sex but with any other people in which emotional exposition and connection is required with one plant out of the ten and water there may be some challenges here and being more emotional more emotionally exposed or emotional exposition as we like to call it and with the person is comfortable with self and that of receiving emotional truth from others. We have also uh, the fire. The fire element is about inspiration and action. Here, out of the 10 planets, we got one planet in fire sign. So there may be an issue here of uh, laziness at its worst case scenario. Uh, lack of ambition or lack of drive or the person may have been born with poor health in which the energy and vitality of the vital body again talking about one of the other seven bodies may be depleted or deficient in energy to carry out even the simplest of tasks this though is not a death sentence if according to this chart because it's a point to begin and build upon and improve upon. If you know that you have one planet in fire sign and you want to succeed and, and, and need that energy, fire energy of inspiration and action to uh, uh, finish or complete a task, then that's the area that one has to work with. Actively work on improving and, and enhancing. The same with the uh, one planet in water or one planet in air. So there may be some rigidity intellectually with one planet in air. There may be emotional um, retardation in the sense that there's some uh, aspects emotionally that were missing in childhood and you might need to go backwards in time to clear that. Or there might be an issue directly connected to the mother. No. Uh, with the one planet out of the ten in the fire, um, there may be issues or ongoing issues throughout life dealing with depression. Or one has to work extra hard to achieve a sense of balance and inner harmony and also outer effectiveness in completing tasks. So these are the challenges uh, with one planet in water, one planet in air, and one planet in fire. The one that is the most populated out of the four elements, remember it's air, water, fire, and earth. Mr. De Jesus has seven planets out of the ten in earth signs, which means that in this life, money material prosperity and accumulation of goods is going to be very important to this man right um the whole reason for living is to acquire material wealth material security and prosperity okay uh, with so many planets almost all the planets remember we're dealing with 10 and out of the 10 seven of them in earth signs it is a guarantee that this man is going to achieve a certain level of material acumen and success despite the fact that the other elements are rather deficient in only having one planet per uh, element the seven planets out of the ten in earth is quite good and quite promising now we have something again still dealing with the elements where we have what's called cardinal and then we have mutable and then we have fixed when we're dealing with the signs of the zodiac we got four signs that are cardinal four signs 
that are mutable and four signs that are fixed. This is also important because it defines boundaries of personality, not just physically, but also mentally. So if you have, <coughs> excuse me, if you have a predominance of cardinal signs, which would be Aries, Libra, Cancer, and Capricorn, then you're here to be a mover and a shaker. Produce tangible results. If you have a predominance of planets in mutable signs, which will be Gemini, Sagittarius, Virgo, and Pisces, then you are here to be more creative. And you know, creativity can take many factions. You could be creative in government, in politics, creative as a singer or as an artist. Creativity is creativity. And there's no boundary when it comes to being creative and being innovative and being even artistic. And it doesn't have to mean that you are uh, gonna gravitate to the arts, no. Uh, creativity, creativity can, is, is an energy from within that you can bring to a situation. Even an accountant, which is a very boring job, can be extremely creative in the way that you do your job. So again, it's a relative term. So, but mutable also gives you adaptability N nothing is sticks and stone if you want to climb to the top and you create a contingency plan to move to the top and you encounter obstacles opposition and adversity if you have enough mutable emphasis in your chart you can deviate from the plan or alter or modify the plan to still get to where you need to go it's not a form of rigidity Okay? and stubbornness now the that falls now with the fixed signs Scorpio Taurus Aquarius and Leo if there is a predominance of these uh, planets and uh, these signs then we might find someone who is very fixated in both action behavior and thought and even personal attitudes that will influence his choices to move forward or not. Choose another alternative, listen to people, or uh, rely on their own thought patterns, their own values. They may not necessarily agree with society or with their own family or friends or even their own community. They determine what the course of action will be. They determine how it's gonna happen and they determine the time to act. This is fixidity. Okay? So, Mr. De Jesus has a predominance out of the 10 planets. Five of them, which is half, are in cardinal signs. To have half of the planets or more in cardinal emphasis also like the seven planets out of ten in earth science guarantees success execution of plans and action and reaping tangible results there's no way that one can be successful financially or even achieve wealth if there is no inner drive or ambition to do this and to get there and with half of the planets in cardinal science this man is absolutely going to succeed in achieving what he wants, materially. And probably in this lifetime, amass a considerable amount of wealth. Oh, absolutely. These are determinants. Then we have what we call angular, succeedant, and cadent. Again, if you have many planets 
and the angles so first house the seventh house the tenth house and the fourth house these are the angles right the angle the, the cross we call it the cardinal cross or the fixed cross or the mutable cross depending on the signs leading okay this person mr de jesus has seven out of the ten planets in angular emphasis again the the angles also represent cardinality so to have seven planets in angles what we call angular also guarantees success in whatever field he may choose in this instance it's in the earth science which is money and finances and material prosperity so here we have three definite signatures that this person is going to succeed or is meant to succeed in achieving great material master this person is a capital born on the 15th of January so uh, this is absolutely uh, a slam dunk for this for this person this person uh, and, and not to say well no I, I you know all Capricorns that I know that I've experienced It's a tough world, but they like it that way. The tougher, the better. Capricorns don't like to be given anything or, or, or conquer something that's easy. It doesn't bring them that kind of solid fulfillment. Remember, the ruler of the sign is Saturn. Right? So, you know, you, you know, these people are thorough. And you can't fool them. And usually, their ambition takes many pits and turns and falls and rises but when they reach the top it's almost impossible impossible to take them down they receive every single obstacle opposition adversity to that success and being very clear minded and, and being very focused and centered they reach their goal. And this can be 10 years, 20 years, 30, or a whole lifetime. But with so much earth, so much carnality, and so much angularity, there is no way that this person is not going to succeed in obtaining what he wants. We have succeeding in cadence. This person has no planet in succeeding emphasis which means that uh, there is a certain level of intolerance and inner fortitude that will not be moved. It will not be moved. And at the same time, they can also be quite personally artistic and creative without showing up to the outside world. Uh, the the succeeding emphasis has to do with the astrological houses the fifth house of Leo, the second house of Taurus the eleventh house of Aquarius and the uh, eighth house of Scorpio and we're dealing with uh, resources of other people access of other people with a zero emphasis on succeeding this person is not going to receive the cooperation of those around him if anything they may seek to stop him and make the climb more difficult now that's valuable information to know so one doesn't feel personally responsible for the uh, insecurities and therefore the actions of such people against this person okay? uh, but no with with this promising signature of success materially 
you have to look at the counterbalance of that. And the counter or the antithesis of this potential for success is that you're going to receive obstacles, opposition, and adversity from people that see your potential, your drive, your plan, and then choose to block you, stop you, slow you down, impede you in some way. Okay? And this can occur to family, friends, and even colleagues and associates. The climb definitely will not be easy. But then again, the promise is great riches, great material prosperity. It's, it's all over this. Okay? Um, we have then the cadence. The cadence is your level of creativity. Your level of creativity uh, in your personal life and in your professional life. Now, we got three planets out of the ten in cadence houses, which means that this is something that you right now may not take as a priority to develop. But maybe when you get much, much older and you have achieved a certain level of success, then you begin to move towards the kids. For example, you got people who are very wealthy, uh, powerful, and they work their entire lives to get there. Now that they're there, they decide to paint or do sculpture. Something that brings them relaxation and another level of fulfillment. They've already mastered the material world and got all the money and success that they want. Now they get to relax and connect with nature and become painters, become writers, become, um, you know, it's, you got everything you want. There's no more challenges, you know? You're good. You're, and, and this is the cadence emphasis, okay? Well, you, now you gravitate towards a, 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 a point of calmness that allows you to feel secure and even feel loved. You know, beginning with self. You know, and now you get to reach another level that has nothing to do with conquering the material world and conquering uh, or achieving our goals of financial success. It's already been done. And uh, now, as one is much, much older, one seeks to nurture spirit. You can't nurture spirit when you're at your prime and at the climb. Because they, they don't go together. But once you make the choice to go to the mundane and conquer the world and amass wealth and prosperity and all that, then you move towards the spiritual or the esoteric, which is what the Cated emphasis suggests. Okay. So with the three planets out of the ten here, um, the spiritual development won't be uh, as important as the mundane ambition of tangible results of success that most Capricorns, which is most dear to Capricorns and Earth signs, you know? So that is the actual, um, you, this, this all falls under the elements of fire, water, air, and Earth. That's how we break it down. Now, the chart ruler, the entire chart, even though we got 10 planets, and for those astrologers that use asteroids and other points, you know, it can, ooh, Lord, it can be really complex. I keep it very simple, okay? Um, with all of the planets in the signs and houses, Taurus rules the ascendant. This is another indicator. Taurus rules money and material success. And to have Taurus on the ascendant is another signature of great financial potential for that success. I'll give you another one. The moon is here in Taurus on the ascendant. The moon is exalted in Taurus. Again, another signature of great financial wealth potential, even at, this, at the degree that it's on. So this, all of this is just positive, you know, checkpoints, checklist of the 
determinants. This is not about potential. This is not about potential. This is definitely going to happen for this man. It is written and the signatures keep repeating themselves. Okay? We got Taurus, the moon Taurus also is forming a finger of God, the yacht. This is very rare, guys. Very rare. This man has the finger of God, the yacht, and is pointing straight to Taurus with the moon here. There is no motherfucking way that this man is not going to achieve all of his material and financial goals. There's no way. He absolutely going to. Absolutely. I have also the finger of God, the yard of God. And I also have it in the moon, in Aries. He has it in Taurus. But these are rare, rare signatures. And I don't think I've ever met anyone or has analyzed any birth chart in which the, the, the promise of what's being spoken here doesn't materialize. In my 55 years, this has always been tried and true. Even those who don't even follow their path, because we got free will not to stumble upon the wealth, stumble upon the opportunity. Because at the end of the day, we are not going to, the universe won't allow us to completely deviate from the destiny that has been carved out for us. One way or another, depending even on our own free will, we are going to fulfill the birth chart as we were supposed to. There's a certain sense of comfort with that because the angels and the archangels and your ancestors are going to make sure that, that you stay on path. And the birth chart is the key or the map to stay there. But it's also the tool that you have to use. Well, you don't have to. But it's better if you do, because it, it clearly defines what needs to be done, the pitfalls that you can avoid, and then the cycles of time and transit that will open those doors for you. Can you imagine trying to do something, and you know that you're good at it, and you know that you're supposed to do it, but you do it at the wrong time, or at the wrong cycle, so it doesn't materialize. It doesn't materialize. And then you're saying, oh, I made a mistake. I, I chose this path, but it's not really for me. Uh, I made a mistake. No, no, you didn't make a mistake. You just chose the wrong time for the cycle. Everything has a cycle and everything has a time. You know, this is something that you're not gonna know just out of the drop of a hat. You need to have a birth chart done and, and to actually delineate these cycles and their time sequences. That way, when you move towards creating something, manifesting something, you do it at the proper cycle. And then you're going to see it open up and materialize for you. This is how one uses the transits and the progressions of the chart. You know, because as we get older, the chart moves with us too. Okay? And this is what will determine almost like a ricochet and trigger the birth chart and certain cycles okay and the astrologer his job is to let you know which where these cycles are and when they will begin and when they will end and if there are hard aspects to these planets that might alter change or slow down was due to you, the destiny that is guaranteed to you. Do you understand? The chart ruler is Venus. Another confirmation. The entire chart is ruled by Venus because Venus rules Taurus. Where the moon is exalted, Venus rules money. It rules Taurus. This is another confirmation. The final depositor of the entire horoscope. And these are difficult calculations. The final depositor of the horoscope is Saturn. 
the ruler of Capricorn. Mr. De Jesus is a Capricorn. So this is a guarantee, but it's not going to be an easy climb. Nothing is easy when it comes to Saturn. But the fact that Saturn is the final depositor of the horoscope, with Venus being its chart ruler, guarantees that the success, especially financial, is very protected. And, 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 you, and, and the level of satisfaction that Mr. De Jesus is going to achieve in reaching that point of success is something that is almost heavenly. It's almost blissful, right? He's not gonna want it any other way. We have also another special signature which is called the mutual reception. A mutual reception is when you got two planets that rule the sign switching towards the other. For example, Libra rules, I mean Venus rules Libra, right? And Uranus rules Aquarius. Well, in this chart, we got Venus and Aquarius and we got Uranus in Libra. See, they're both ruling each other's sign. We call that a mutual reception. And what that means is that both Uranus and Venus function together in both Libra and Uranus. It's another special and unique signature. It doesn't occur in every birth chart. This is another rare signature. And here, it falls in the technology. Technology, but because it's all in Capricorn though. You know? So, there is a very strong emphasis to the career for Mr. De Jesus will involve technology, forward technology, but also money like uh, Bitcoins and, and things like that, the stock market or, 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 or new level currency. That's also quite an emphasis. Um, the moon is the only planet of all the 10 planets in this birth chart that's in isolation. We call that a singleton, but it's also what forms the yard, the finger of God. This is where all of Mr. De Jesus' energy, priority, and emphasis should be focused on is that Taurus moon on the ascendant. The exaltation of the moon in Taurus also brings great stability to the moon. And to have it on the ascendant, this level of stability, because you know the bull Taurus is iron, you know, nothing can move the bull. It leads to a consistency of character, which will eventually bring about success material. There's no wishy-washiness here. There's a lot of discipline and concentrated focus. Very, very fortunate uh, position, especially when you have the yard here in Taurus. Okay. Yeah. The the most elf, the most aspected planet of all the ten planets in the world that is Jupiter, the king of the gods, the ruler of Sagittarius. So again uh, this makes sense Saturn makes things hard but with Jupiter with so many squares so many aspects that can also be hard is to force you to push forward regardless of the obstacles opposition and adversity presented to you by both Jupiter and Saturn which and this goes into specific detail okay the most elevated planet is the sun in Capricorn at the midheaven at an, at, at, an, at an exact conjunction of zero degrees. Absolutely fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. A fascinating chart. This person is going to shine. This person is going to be in the public spotlight, whether he wants to or not, whether he likes it or not. The sun at its highest elevation in the tenth, at right conjunct the midheaven, there ain't no fucking way. That, and in Capricorn, 
Again, another signature that this man is all about material wealth, prosperity. Even if he himself maybe may not exude that kind of ambition, it will knock on his door when the time is right and put him in that course. There's a lot of emphasis here in this Capricorn and the earth signs and powerful positions of the angles that is going to absolutely confirm success. Okay. The oriental planet is also the moon in Taurus. Again, in isolation, that also means that there may be issues of emotional instability. There may be issues of emotional instability that may happen from time to time. Independent of any reason, don't forget that even though the moon is exalted in Taurus and it's relatively stable, the moon still has phases. So we may see um, complexity in the personality of Mr. De Jesus with the moon on the ascendant. Regardless of the sign, it may bring uh, emotional ups and downs, which can be correlated to bouts of momentary depression. And this is confirmed by the fact that he only has one planet out of the ten in fire emphasis, which is the spirit, vitality, inspiration, and action. This is a challenge area that Mr. De Jesus is going to have to continuously work on to bring up that level of energy to bring about tangible results that he wants to see now and in the future. We got the moon at 27 degrees, which is of that of learning. Being the yard on this chart, I will suggest that the level of education has to be top premium. And that part of his success, materially, will involve some type of educational institution with the moon at 27 degrees. The sun at 24 degrees, which is ascending the vibration of Venus, guarantees a happy marriage. A happy marriage, no divorce. This is definite. When this man marries, it's for kids and it's forever. So we're talking here about a soulmate or a twin flame. With the sun in Capricorn at 24 degrees, you add two and four and that's six. That's Venus, the chart ruler, the ruler of Taurus. You see how we go back again to that? So this is just fantastic. The 27 is number nine, which is Jupiter, the most aspected planet in the birth chart. In Virgo, the sign of work, productivity, health. So again, it connects right back to material prosperity, material acumen. Totally, totally. Okay? Uh, these confirmations, they're not isolated. They feed on each other. And that's how astrologers are able to confirm that these um, determinants and target signatures are a promise to the person that this chart belongs to. And in talking to Mr. Uh, in referencing Mr. De Jesus, he should be extremely excited and motivated because what I'm discussing here in his birth chart should already be resonating and vibrating independent of this information in him already. The chart will confirm these energies already inherent in him. It's not like he's being given information about himself that he has, that he has no clue emotionally, maybe spiritually, but not emotionally mundane. To a certain degree, he will know. And then he will also know that more is needed to know. Right? So this is already vibrating 
inside the person. Okay? Uh, thank you. We are done with part two.